And we are live. How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to the Punch Perfect Boxing Channel, proudly sponsored by Empire Fight Store. Before we get going today, please make sure to like the video, comment your prediction for this fight down below, and if you're new, please make sure to subscribe to the channel. To date, I'm going to be doing my Punch Perfect prediction for Sonny Edwards defending his IBF Flyweight World Championship against mandatory challenger Felix Alvarado this Friday in Sheffield. The fight will be available for free on Fight TV, so I'll leave a link in the description so you're able to find it nice and easy. Before we do get into the preview and the breakdown, I do just want to say I'm closing in on the 5,000 subscriber mark, so if you are new and tuning into the channel for the first time, please make sure to subscribe. It would be much appreciated. Plenty more predictions for all the big fights and even some of the lesser-known fights coming every single week, so make sure to, uh, to subscribe and become a part of the Punch Perfect Boxing family. Getting into this fight today, um, I think it's a really good matchup for Sonny Edwards. I think it's the toughest opponent of his career. Not the greatest opponent that he's faced or shared the ring with, but I think it's the most dangerous assignment he's had so far. And I'll get a little bit more into that later in the video and talk a bit more about Felix Alvarado. But just for Sonny Edwards, who will be utterly disappointed with the fact that he didn't land the Julio Cesar Martinez fight. And for us fans, I think we're all really disappointed too. I said it's the most significant and important fight at the flyweight weight class at the start of the year. I said that it was on the top 10 uh, fights that I want to see in 2022 also. It just has the narrative um, with, you know, uh, Martinez coming over to the UK and beating his brother Charlie. With all the campaigning that um, Sonny Edwards has done in terms of the failed PED tests and speaking out about the Reynoso gym and Mexican fighters. I think that brings a bit of beef to it as well. And just also, I think the uh, the styles, it's the typical boxer versus puncher matchup, and I think it would blend quite nicely. The IBF champion versus the WBC champion, arguably the one versus two with Junto Nakatani now gone. I just think it would have been the perfect fight for October, November. And I actually thought it was going to be, yeah, it was going to happen as well. So I was really disappointed when that fell through. But I think Sonny will be more disappointed than anyone because he signed his version of the contract. He was ready to go. He wants this fight more than anyone. And I just don't think DAZN are necessarily keen on it. And I can understand why, because Sonny is such a, a difficult task. But for DAZN, I think their plan is for Martinez that Bam Rodriguez has vacated his super flyweight belt. He's moving down to uh, 112 to challenge for the WBO belt that Junto Nakatani has now made vacant. And I think Rodriguez will win that. I then think he'll challenge Martinez in a unification. And, you know, there's Mexican heritage there for Rodriguez. Obviously, Martinez is Mexican. I just think it makes a lot of sense for them to go down that route. But that, again, puts Sonny out in the cold a little bit. And for me, I have him as the number one flyweight in the world at the minute. I did have Junto, but now that he's moved up, I think Sonny has the best win in Methalani. So... It's a bit of a tricky time for him. For him to be able to kind of hold on to that number one status, he'll need to get the fights, and it's just going to be really difficult for him. The WBA champion, Dalakayan, doesn't really seem to be taking on anyone at the minute. That's been the biggest criticism of him. A lot of people feel like he's almost holding that belt a little bit hostage. Maybe he gets forced into a situation where he has to defend against someone, but for the meantime, the most makeable fight seemed like it was Martinez, and now I'm not so sure that's the case. So I feel a bit so sorry for Sonny, but... Right now, I think he can hold the uh, the crown as the number one flyweight. Moving into this fight, the reason I think it's such a difficult test for him, and the reason I think Alvarado's his best opponent yet, is because Methalani's the greatest fighter that he shared the ring with. You know, Methalani has a case for the Hall of Fame. He's one of the best flyweights of his generation, and one of the greatest flyweight runs ever as well. But he was inactive and was coming towards the end of his career. So I think he's the greatest fighter Sonny shared the ring with. But in terms of in their sort of peak years, I think Felix Alvarado is a world-class fighter that is actually right at the probably final stages of his prime. But I think as an athlete, he's still very much at the top of his game. So I think ultimately that means he's the most dangerous assignment. I think he's the biggest puncher Sonny's been in with, with as well. Sonny's been in with some decent punchers, some aggressive fighters, but I don't think any of them are quite as aggressive or quite as dangerous as uh, Felix Alvarado. So it's a good test for him. I think the one knock people would have is that Felix Alvarado is obviously moving up from like flyweight where he's campaigned for a long time. But ultimately, the reason he moved up was in search of big fights because he wasn't getting them at light flyweight. The funny thing is, if he'd have stuck around a little bit longer there, we see now at light flyweight that all the big fights are developing. So I think he probably could have landed a unification, but he decided to vacate that belt. He's moved up, and now this is the opportunity that he's been waiting for. And for Sonny, 
regardless of whether you know he is going to get phased out a little bit by the big promoters and and the rest of the champions at flyweight this is a good opportunity for him and probellum in sheffield to kind of headline his own show and get his own shine which i think is important but just long term i think he needs to be with the zone to land these fights i think to land you know, a, a unification against the winner of Bam versus Martinez, or even just either of them when they both hold belts. Even if he wanted to move down to like flyweight to challenge uh, Non Shinga, who is the IBF champion that is actually with Matram now, I think he could face him and also beat him quite comfortably as well. Um, he could move up potentially, and you've got the likes of Chocolatito, Estrada, who all work with DAZN as well. So I think that's where he needs to be. Even if he went to Sky, I think he'd get a little bit more shine than he would with Probellum because of just the mainstream attention and, and the media side of it that Sky bring. And I think he deserves that because he truly is one of our best pound-for-pound -pound fighters at the minute. But I do just worry over on Probellum. It's going to be difficult. And I think Felix Alvarado is the highest level of opponent they can get for him. And whilst he's a very good fighter, I don't think they can go anything beyond that. And there are fighters beyond Felix Alvarado. So... Yeah, listen, dangerous fighter. I've watched Felix Alvarado for years now. Uh, quick story, I actually did a article back in 2020, I think it was during the pandemic, and I was doing a lot of writing at the time for various boxing websites, and they said to me, we'd like you to do a bit of a, a, a make-up world um, boxing super series tournament. You pick three weight classes, and the first one I picked was like flyweight. And when I was writing it, obviously I had Ken Shiro in there, obviously had um, Guy Gucci in there, had a lot of really top fighters. It was Canizales before he'd lost as well. There were tons of good fighters, Hecky Budler. But at the time, I put Felix Alvarado in there, and I actually wrote in that article, he's the dark horse to win the whole thing. Reason being is I don't think he's as skilled as Guy Gucci or Ken Shiro, or even Hecky Budler potentially. He's the most venomous puncher in that division. Um... He can really whack, he's wild, he's reckless, he's got a good chin, it's just very difficult to deter. And I would have made him, you know, the, the underdog for that tournament if there was, you know, if that had come to fruition and there was uh, betting available, I probably would have backed him as the bit of the wild card to go and upset everybody. So he is incredibly dangerous and what I find the most dangerous about him heading into this Sonny fight is the reason Sonny Edwards has basically been punch perfect, um, pardon the pun, for the uh, last few fights is a lot of his opponents their feet are far too slow for them to get into position to ever even land a shot against Sonny Sonny's so quick on his feet his hand movement his punch anticipation is also good he's one step ahead of you at all times what Alvarado is quite good at because he has no regard for his own defense is he'll just like jump into position and that sounds a little bit exaggerated but now he will literally like slide his way forward or jump into position to cut the ring off if he feels like he's too far away from you do a little jog he'll run at you and try and close the ring off as much as he can and sometimes it's a little bit naive and it's a little bit too aggressive and a little bit short-sighted it works a lot against decent opposition but against Sonny I think ultimately you need to have a little bit more than that he does look for the one big shot a little bit too much as well which because Sonny went down early in his career and there were questions about his chin everyone now is just looking for one big punch against him and what they didn't realize is those shots that landed on Sonny and put him down were because people set them up but when Sonny's at a world level where he is really switched on and he knows how dangerous his opponent is it's basically impossible to clock with one of those big punches. So you can't keep looking for those big punches. And Alvarado does swing those right hands and those left hook a little bit recklessly. And I think you'll see a few highlights come Saturday uh, morning, the night after the fight, where you'll see you know, these clips of Alvarado launching a right hand and Sonny just kind of dancing away and, and you know making him look a little bit silly. But ultimately, he's strong. He's got a good range. He's able to just explode with a big punch from nowhere. And he's relentless. And if he does corner you, you best believe he is going to throw 100 punches to try and, and try and get through. If you try and hold on, he'll try and throw you off. He's a dirty fighter as well. There's been fights in the past, actually his second career defeat, where he had uh, two points taken, both for low blows. So he's not afraid to kind of get down and dirty. And on away soil... Although you've got to be very cautious if you make any mistakes, the judges' scorecards are going to go against you. If you're also planning to win by knockout, you might be more willing to play a little bit dirty. So I think he brings plenty of problems for Sonny. Sonny needs to be at his absolute best to win this, but I just think he's got far too much skill. Sonny is far too elusive. His 
His just reading of his opponent is exceptional. Like I say, he's always two or three steps ahead. So by the time you're planning to set up that right hand or to launch it, he's already planned what his next move is. And I just think he's an exceptional boxer. I think Grant Smith is an exceptional trainer that's doing a really good job with him. So yeah, I do favour Sonny to win this fight. Like we do say with Sonny, he doesn't have much power and that's mainly because of his fighting style. He's always on the back foot and he's not actually trying to land hard or sit down on his shots. He's just trying to catch you and get away. So I think he'll pick his way to a decision. Alvarado's been in with some great opposition, including Kazuta Aoka. The scorecards were very strange for that fight. Two of them had it really wide. One of them only saw it um, two rounds in favour of Aoka. But he's mixed it at a good standard, uh, standard. The DJ Creel fight was absolutely brilliant. You should go back and watch that one. Um, I'm quite close with DJ Creel's trainer. So I remember that one around the time. And a really fun fight. But Creel actually landed a lot of shots on Alvarado but just couldn't get away and I think when you when you look at what Sonny can do he'll be able to get away from those punches so a good level of opponent for Sonny I just hope ultimately he's able to find a way to really force these other champions whether it be the weight below at his weight or the weight above to face him because he needs those big fights now because I think he deserves them and he wants them that's the most important thing with Sonny he is calling for those fights so let's get them made I'm picking Sonny to win by a points decision, I'll also have predictions out for another Brit who is actually challenging for the world title rather than defending it in Denzel Bentley going over to challenge Yanabeka Lim Hanali. That's a tough task. Do I think he can do it? You'll have to find out in the prediction video tomorrow. But thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe and I'll catch you next time.